Welcome back, guys, to another episode of Boss Busters, the series where I show you how to defeat some of the toughest bosses in the Kingdom Hearts series and maybe other series as well. It's been a while, but we are finally diving into the Kingdom Hearts 2.5 Remix. So let's just start off at Disney Castle. If you've done every single world's visits, including optional ones, and then beat the game, you should get a notification to show up here. At the Hall of the Cornerstone, we find this big, very mysterious black portal, and this is how we will access the fight. Yes, all the best fights are accessed through dark portals. So let's start with the toughest of them all, Lingering Will. Before you go in, let's get started with the preparations. So before going in, put on all of your best equipments. So either your Keyblade with the greatest strength and magic balance, or if you wish, take up the Decisive Pumpkin for that extra ground combo boost. Generally put on all high level equipments, notably I like to bring full bloom pluses for the extra MP haste abilities. These can be synthesized by Moogles. Also, kinda a no-brainer, but you wanna be level 99 for this fight. Unless you're doing some kind of special lower level run, you wanna be level 99. All of your dry forms should also be maxed out so you have the greatest mobility during the fight. Check my video on that if you haven't already taken care of it. Take a look at this chart for all of the abilities you are going to wanna have equipped for this fight. I made quick run optional because some people have trouble with having both dodge roll and quick run as the square button. Even though for dodge roll you simply give square a tap and for quick run you hold square a bit longer. If it trips you up you don't have to bring quick run along but I think it does help out. And lastly if you are super paranoid you can give Donald and Goofy items but I don't think it's too necessary but definitely equip items for yourself such as elixirs. All set? Alright let's hop through the portal. It's really interesting because right off the bat, there are some things you need to know. Lingering Will's first attack comes out very fast, but you can get around it if you're prepared. He will either start with the Cannon, Gauntlet Punch, Curse, Rising Sun, or Keyblade Glider. There is a nifty trick to tell which it's going to be. During the beginning of the fight, the camera keeps switching between the opponent and Sora. At the last little close-up of Lingering Will, you will see him activating his first move. Right about here is where you should see something. Pause the game if you need to take a look. He may be transforming his Keyblade into the Ultima Cannon or his Keyblade Glider. This is what it looks like if he's about to take out the Glider as his first move, and this is what it looks like if he's transforming his Keyblade into a Cannon. So if you see him do either of these in the last panel before the gameplay starts, it's simple. Just dodge roll back. Once you've done that, if it's the Cannon, just block it back at him and you will have an opportunity to attack. If it is the glider, dodge roll or guard each of his successive strikes until he lands. And when he lands, that's your opportunity to attack. But what if he's just standing there? Menacingly, in the last panel before the gameplay with no clear signal of what he is going to do? You should mash reflect before it even transitions to Sora. He may do rising sun, which if he does, just keep spamming reflect until he lands. Usually he is vulnerable when he lands, but because you were reflecting, you won't have time to counter, so don't bother trying. He may also do a curse move, in which he dashes towards you and then sticks his keyblade in the ground causing an area of effect attack. Just one reflect is good enough for that, but don't try to attack him afterwards, just move away. Both of these moves actually can be avoided without using reflect and instead dodge rolling, but there is a reason I tell you to use reflect if he's doing nothing in the final panel instead of waiting and scoping the move out. And that is because of this. This punch. This is so fast, so ridiculously fast that guarding or dodge rolling at the beginning will not work. In fact, it has no signals either. It hits you immediately when the battle starts. So to be safe, I say use reflect as it is the only move that will really help you out with this. If you manage to reflect it, it will hit him and you can follow it up with a guard break combo into a second guard break combo into explosion and then quick run away. So to recap, if you see him preparing an attack in the final close up before gameplay, dodge roll back and retaliate appropriately. If he does nothing in the final close up, don't take any chances and just reflect whatever attack he throws at you. Alright great, you survived his first attack, what do you want a birthday cake? Now the battle truly begins, welcome to phase 1. So I did tell you some of his first attacks when there were chances for you to start comboing him, but I didn't specify how you should 
do it, so I'll go ahead and do that now. Whenever Lingering Will lands after an attack, you are able to do what I call 3 combos with 4 finishers if you have both Guard Break and Explosion equipped. What I mean by this is that you do a full combo to Guard Break, start over a full combo to Guard Break, and then start over again a full combo to Guard Break, and then press the X button again to do Explosion. Whew, hefty combo to be sure, but after the Explosion, Make sure you quick run or triple dodge roll away because after this finish we triggered his revenge value. So he will break out of the combo and retaliate, most likely with a keyblade whip, but he could do lasers as well which I'll show you how to deal with later. But there are a couple of exceptions to this. If you blocked his ultima cannon back at him and then start comboing him, only do 2 combos into guard break and then explosion, not 3 for his revenge will trigger earlier. Same goes for if you reflected his punch move at the start of the fight, because the reflect hit him, only do 2 guard breaks and then end off with the explosion to trigger the revenge. There is one more thing you should know about his revenge value. Early on his 5th bar down, and I'd say right here, he will do an automatic revenge whip or lasers, doesn't matter if you just started your combo or what. So if you see his HP getting low on the 4th bar down, even if you aren't doing your 3rd successive combo yet, just do explosion early and get out of there so you don't get hit by his preset revenge move. If you're really close to that 5th bar area and don't think you can combo into explosion and get away quickly enough, hit him with thunder when he is vulnerable and it will still trigger that preset revenge. Alright that's how comboing is basically gonna work for the entire battle. Hope you are following me with that, it's a little complicated in words, but in actuality it's not that bad. Alright, so let's go through his phase 1 attacks that he'll be throwing at you. A lot of these are the same as his possible starter moves I showed you earlier, but since it's after the start of battle, there are more efficient ways to deal with some of these. His most common attack is going to be when you see him jump into the air, float and then start dashing back and forth with his keyblade. For this move I like to dodge roll, but dodge roll in the direction he's moving. This way, when he decides to land, you will already be facing towards him, and you can go into a combo more easily. Although this move is easy to dodge, I urge you to be careful. He does Rising Sun in sets of 3, but he won't always land after the third swoop. I like to keep my eye on his feet, because if I see him landing, then I will know it is safe to go in for the attack. But if he's not landing, you might want to back away, because he could, and I must stress this, very quickly transition into the Keyblade Whip move. If he does this and you catch wind of it, quick run away. After this whip move ends, he'll definitely be vulnerable and it will be okay to then go and attack him. Go with the flow and relax, he controls the pace of battle while doing this move, but afterwards you can go for a counter. Just make sure he actually lands before trying to attack him or things won't go smoothly. If you see Lingering Will at any point running to you, yeah just running not teleporting or anything, it means he either wants to punch you, curse you, or do some more rising suns. Let him run to you and I'd say you guard. I say this because most likely, I'd say about a 70% chance or higher, it's gonna be that punch, which after one guard just do nothing and once the move ends he will be vulnerable and you can go ahead and attack him. Lingering Will has quite a few main Keyblade transformation moves he will throw at you. Thankfully, almost all of them are easy to deal with. The first one is where he transforms his Keyblade into a giant cannon and is prepared to fire. If you see him transforming, move back to a reasonable distance. You shouldn't be super close but not far away in any sense of the word. Block the cannon back at him and he will actually take damage and like I said earlier, he's vulnerable and you can follow it up with two guard break combos and two explosion. If you were too close to the cannon when you guarded it, the cannonball will go off to the side. And if you were too far, it will just come right back at you while Lingering Will goes to begin other attacks. If you fail in either of these ways, just dodge roll into the cannonball to get rid of it and lock on so that you know how close Lingering Will is. Since your vision will be gone for a moment, you just want to make sure he isn't too close to you with a new attack. He may also throw his keyblade behind him and have it return in glider form. If he does this, he's gonna back up and then begin charging at you. First off, get a little bit of distance and then just be prepared to dodge roll. Note that he could start with a charge right into you, or he could go around and then start charging into you. You can tell which he will do by looking at which direction the nose of the glider is facing in 
before he takes off. But if you are dodge rolling and not guarding, it should be no big deal anyway. He'll keep doing this until an eventual landing where he will be finally vulnerable for you to attack. But this glider move is a bit weird because there are a few variations. Sometimes when taking out the glider, he will bring a couple of lasers out to surround you. If there are lasers with the glider, I actually advise you to guard instead of dodge rolling. Because you will then be guarding both the laser shots and his glider. It's pressuring, but once you get the rhythm down, you should be fine. If he lands and lasers are still surrounding you, I'd say don't take the chance and just keep guarding the lasers. If you're locked onto him and you guard the lasers while he's vulnerable, they will hit him anyway and do some damage. But there are two more variations that are very rare for this glider move. If he has been using the glider on you forever and you haven't been retaliating, he might start spinning and twirling with it. If he does this, you need to time your dodge rolls or guards a bit later, as it will take longer for him to get to you. It's just a little mind trick, and he may also very rarely shoot out Blizzaga while twirling. And if he does this, I advise you to guard instead of dodge roll for extra invincibility frames. This is extremely rare but possible. The timing is really iffy, so if you are having a lot of trouble with timing the Blizzaga guards, just go final form and glide around to easily deal with it. Lastly, sometimes while doing the Keyblade Glider, he may cast Magnet on you to attract you to a certain area. This is also extremely rare, and you probably won't see him do this on you, but if he does, don't sweat it. It barely affects the timing of your dodges and guards besides the fact that it may drain a bit of your health. Another Keyblade transformation move that we already sort of talked about is the Keyblade Whip. Now I already told you this is commonly used as his revenge tactic, but he also might just bring it out as a follow up to an attack like Rising Sun or the Keyblade Glider, or he will dash to you and do it out of nowhere. This attack is extremely fast so whenever you see it coming, either after some of his other attacks or standalone, you need to quick run or dodge roll away. Guarding works, but isn't really reliable enough for me to recommend this as a full on tactic, so just get out of the way. Even when you're away from him as he does the whip, keep your eyes open because he may be inching towards you while doing it. Keep a safe distance. If you did the whip as a follow up or an attack out of nowhere, he will be vulnerable to attacks while he lands, so go ahead and combo him. But if he is doing this as a revenge move, aka you were just comboing him before he pulled out the whip. He may not be vulnerable and could transition into a new attack, so don't try to attack him if he's doing it as a form of revenge. Got it? And now we can talk about the curses. The first type of curse he can pull on you is if he transforms his Keyblade into a bow and arrow type of weapon. If you see him doing this, get away from him. Run in the opposite direction. This will force him to teleport to you instead of just shooting you straight out. And that's exactly what we want. See, when he teleports, it makes this sound. And that sound is the perfect cue for you to dodge roll. Every time you hear him teleport, dodge roll and you should be safe. After the third shot, he will typically stop, so you can lock onto him, wait for him to put his Keyblade back, and he will be vulnerable right after when his Keyblade reverts, so go ahead and attack him right after. But if you didn't manage to time your dodges right, you'll have to deal with this curse. Your health will be going down every second and you will need to select the escape command to break the curse. Oh god, it's like the shock release from Kingdom Hearts 1 all over again. But don't worry, this version is a little bit slower, so easier. Get on a command you feel comfortable with and wait for escape. You have about half a second to pick it which is much more generous than unknown from Kingdom Hearts 1, so you should be able to pick escape just fine. But keep dodge rolling around during all this, because the Lingering Will will likely be firing ultimate cannons at you during this. After a bit of practice, it should be easy to escape this curse, but be warned, if you get cursed with this and you happen to have no HP left, you will have no time to wait for escape to show up, so I just say at that point mash X as soon as he lets you down and hope for the best. The other curse is a bit more varied, if you see him quickly dash towards you, and what I think the bigger cue is, here is Cape flow in the wind like this. He is going to attempt to curse you. Now be careful with the timing of your dodge here. You want to dodge roll when you see him rise up while pointing his Keyblade at the ground, not during the dash. If you did it correctly, you won't have taken any damage, which is great, but this is not a time to go back and attack him. Lingering Will is not vulnerable after this move, so don't even try. If you dodge roll too early, well, you're gonna get cursed. 
When you get cursed with this move, either your attack commands or your magic commands will get locked. So if your attack commands are locked, you have to bail yourself out with magic and vice versa. The red flame above your head means your attacks are restricted, and the blue flame above your head means magic is restricted. It's completely up to chance which one you'll get. If you're cursed with either of these, the only way to get your attack or magic back is to attack Lingering Will. Lucky for you, if you did get cursed, he is extremely likely to follow this up with just spamming the Ultima Cannon move, which as you know, you can guard at a reasonable distance and then follow up with a combo. The short HP bar you see on Lingering Will represents the curse. So typically, you want to block the Ultima Cannon back at him and then attack. So if your attacks are locked, I like to follow up with Thunder. If you're having a hard time getting Thunder to break the curse, feel free to go Limit Form and use Limits as a substitute for magic spells, and the curse should be broken easily. It is up to you whether or not you want to stay in Limit Form after you've unlocked your attack commands. Now, I said Ultima Cannon was likely for him to use after cursing you, but it's not guaranteed. If he doesn't, you're just gonna have to wait until he's vulnerable after a landing of Rising Suns or a punch to attempt to break your curse. The final attack, I guess you can call it that, that Lingering Will can perform in his first phase is a rather simple one. It is when he teleports out of sight and then surrounds you with these little annoying floating laser cannons that will follow you around everywhere. Now the easy way I like to deal with this is to just glide around and the lasers can't hit you. You can also go into a corner and guard the lasers if you want to do something else, but gliding really is the easiest. Now it is possible to aerial dodge into these things to destroy them, but it's wonky and I prefer just gliding. While you are gliding around, mash the R1 button so you are able to lock onto him as soon as he returns to the battlefield. That's a pretty easy thing to deal with, right? Well, it gets a little bit more complicated. Remember how I said after 3 guard breaks and an explosion you will trigger a forced revenge from Lingering Will? Well these lasers can also be considered forced revenge, and if he doesn't do the whip as his revenge you can almost be 100% sure it'll be these lasers. Now of course you can glide around, but I want you to take note, sometimes after he teleports away and sends lasers he will teleport back near you and start a new attack such as the rising suns while the lasers are still out. It can catch you off guard, so I recommend pressing R1 to attempt to lock on as soon as he sends out these lasers. Just so you know that he's not trying to get a quick attack in before you start gliding around. And if he is attacking while the lasers are out, I recommend guarding instead of dodge rolling for better invincibility frames, just like how I told you to do with the Keyblade Glider. Oh my god, alright, that covers all of his phase 1 attacks, and you may be thinking, how am I gonna keep all of this in my head during the fight? Well, lucky you, you probably don't have to. You see, Lingering Will doesn't use his full arsenal of moves together, and is very likely to just cycle between two or three of his moves over and over again. So you may start a game when he will only do the Ultimate Cannon, Rising Suns, the Bow and Arrow, and of course the Whip for Revenge, leaving out all of his other moves for the entire Phase 1. So I want you to pay attention to which moves he's using during Phase 1 when you are fighting him yourself so that you can know what to expect him to be repeating over and over again. Rarely will he change it up from his regular 3 move pattern in phase 1, so as long as you note which moves he's repeating while you're fighting him, you can be prepared and get into a sort of rhythm with what's going on. Oh, and just a quick side note, if at any time you find yourself in a pinch or a bad at dealing with one of his attacks, let's just say, oh, I'm not good at dealing with the Keyblade Glider, turn final form and just glide around. This effectively nullifies most of his attacks thanks to the automatic guard on your glide. You can also get some massive damage in with this, so use it to your advantage if you need to. Keep these tactics up and eventually you will pass over the... I'd estimate the 6.5 HP bar mark. Right about here, Lingering Will is going to do another forced revenge like with the earlier 5 health bar down one, but this time it's signaling the start of his second and final phase. It's most likely to be revenge in the form of him disappearing and sending out lasers, which we just talked about. So again, just glide around and mash R1 so whenever he gets back you will be able to lock onto him. His other forced revenges could be him doing the Keyblade Whip or doing his new desperation move directly, which I'll show you how to deal with afterwards. But again, lasers are the most likely by a long shot. While gliding away from lasers, eventually you'll see Lingering will reappear and I'd bet he has a glowing circle around him and the sky will go dark. This signals that he is about to do his desperation move. Don't panic. Lock onto him and move a decent distance away. 
not too far just about here is good also i recommend trying to make sure you have the edge of the arena fairly close and in sight you will see him dashing towards you now if you went too far away from the enemy he will teleport and maybe catch you from behind which is bad but if you weren't too far he will just come up to you and begin slashing his keyblade guard three times after the third guard where you see him do that flip get up and double jump and glide you want to glide to the edge of the cliff lingering will will be attacking behind you but it shouldn't hit you as long as you are gliding straight ahead do not turn while he's behind you or lock onto him both will risk you getting hit and then getting sucked into the rest of this attack once you are at the edge face your back to the edge and look at lingering will if he is slashing his keyblade back and forth you made it in time after the slashes you will see him disappear this is your cue to start guarding again he will appear near you and unleash a barrage of crazy physical attacks on you and the reason we came to this edge is so he doesn't try and teleport behind you and ruin your guards you should guard about four times in total and the last of the guards will be when he is slashing his keyblade horizontally after this he will teleport one more time and rush forward dodge roll this last one so that you can catch him because he will be vulnerable to attack after this. Don't worry because it's phase 2. The same guard break, guard break, guard break, explosion combo method works perfectly fine. Just remember to get away. He will still do the revenge with the whip or lasers. Now he doesn't only do his desperation attack during phase 2. He also brings all of his phase 1 attacks back with just one exception. He teleports into them now making them harder to see coming. Don't fret though, you can still dodge all of them the same way except for the punch move which he will now do multiple times in a row before stopping. But hey, just more guards than one now, right? Anyways, remember how I told you in phase 1 he was vulnerable whenever he landed? Well, still it is partially true if you're fast enough, but now he switches between attacks so fast that I recommend not going for the counter attack in the second phase of the fight unless he just finished the desperation move on you or you blocked his ultimate cannon back at him which still manages to stun him. Other than those two openings, I don't recommend going in for any strikes during the second phase of this battle. In fact, use the desperation move as your main opening for attacks from now on. Keep all of this up for the last few bars, and you did it! Congratulations, you have defeated the Lingering Will, what a majority of people consider to be the hardest boss in Kingdom Hearts 2 Final Mix. I hope this guide has helped you in some way, Oh my god, it's long, but it took a whole lot of work, so I would appreciate if you dropped a like, comment, maybe even subscribe for more boss busters. I'm Sir Alam one and until the next boss, I'll catch you guys later. That's all I have for you guys today, but uh, I don't know if I can make it to the next one without your help. Give me strength.